everyone, this is Chelsea from the North Bergen Public Library and welcome to Book Snippets. From a book available to be borrowed from Hoopla. To access Hoopla and borrow this book, visit www.nbkl.org. Today I'll be reading from Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly. Melvin Butler, the personnel officer at the Langley Memorial Aeronautics Laboratory, had a problem the scope and nature of which was made plain in a May 1943 telegram to the Civil Services Chief of Field Operations. This establishment has urgent need for approximately 100 junior physicists and mathematicians, 100 assistant computers, 75 minor laboratory apprentices, 125 helper, trainer, helper trainees, and 50 stenographers and typists, exclaimed the missive. Every morning at 7 a.m., the Bowtie Butler and his staff sprang to life, dispatching the lab station wagon to the local rail depot, the bus station, and the ferry terminal to collect the men and women, so many women now, each day more women, who had made their way to the lonely figure of land on the Virginia coast. The shuttle conveyed the recruits to the door of the laboratory's service building on the campus of Lantern Field. Upstairs, Butler's staff whisked them through the first day stations, forms, photos, and the oath of office. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, so help me God. Thus installed, the newly minted civil servants fanned out to take their places in one of the research facilities' expanding inventory of buildings, each already as full as a pod ripe with peas. No sooner had Sherwood Butler, the laboratory's head of procurement, set the final brick on a new building than his brother, Melvin, set about filling it with new employees. Closets and hallways, stockrooms and workshops stood in as makeshift offices. Someone came up with the bright idea of putting two desks head to head and Jerry rigged the new piece of furniture with a jump seat in order to squeeze three workers into a space designed for two. In the four years since Hitler's troops overran Poland, since American interests in the European war converged in an all-consuming conflict, the laboratory's complement of 500 odd employees at the close of the decade was on its way to 1,500. Yet the great groaning war machine swallowed them whole and remained hungry for more. The offices of the administration building looked out upon the crescent-shaped airfield. Only the flow of civilian clothed people heading to the laboratory, the oldest output of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, distinguished the low brick buildings belonging to that agency from identical ones used by the U.S. Army Air Corps. The two installations had grown up together, the air base devoted to the development of America's military air, quarter, air power capability, the laboratory, a civilian agency charged with advancing the scientific understanding of aeronautics and disseminating its findings to the military and private industry. Since the beginning, the Army had allowed the laboratory to operate on the campus of the airfield. The close relationship with the Army flyers served as a constant reminder to the engineers that every experiment they conducted had real-world implications. The double hangar, two 110-foot-long buildings standing side by side, had been covered in camouflage paint in 1942 to deceive enemy eyes in search of targets, its shady and cavernous interior sheltering the machines and their minders from the elements. Men in canvas jumpsuits, often in groups, moved in trucks and jeeps from plane to plane, stopping to cover it stopping to hover at this one or that, like pollinating insects, checking them, filling them with gas, replacing parts, examining them, becoming one with them, and taking off for the heavens. The music of airplane engines and propellers, cycling through the various movements of takeoff, flight, and landing, played from before sunrise until dusk. Each machine sound as unique to its minders as a baby's cry to its mother. Beneath the tenor notes of the engines, played the base roar of the laboratory's wind tunnels, turning their on-demand hurricanes onto the planes. Plane parts, model planes, and full-size planes. If you enjoyed this excerpt and would like to read the full book, visit Hoopla via our website or download the app.